Welcome back to Williams Motor Co. It's time to retire this old helmet. Stick around. The origins of the motorcycle crash helmet date back to the Brooklyn's racetrack in early 1914. Eric Gardner, a British physicist, started to see patients with injuries produced by motorcycle accidents on an average of every two weeks. As a consequence of the large number of patients he attended, he got the idea of developing a helmet to cover the head of these reckless riders. These first motorcycle helmets were very rudimentary, made of leather or animal hides. He got a Mr. Moss of Bethnal Green to make canvas and shellac helmets stiff enough to stand a heavy blow and smooth enough to glance off any projections that it encountered. He presented the design to the Auto Cycle Union who reluctantly converted to the idea and made them compulsory for the 1914 Isle of Man TT races. Many of the racers resisted the idea of the new mandate. On May 19, 1914, Dr. Garner presented these helmets to the 94 racers. During the race, one rider who hit a gate with a glancing blow was saved by the helmet. Dr. Garner received a letter later from the Isle of Man medical officer stating that after the TT, they normally had several interesting concussion cases, but that in 1914, there were none. Seen in this photo of Cyril Pullen, winner of the Senior Tourist Trophy race aboard his 500cc Rouge TT motorcycle on May 21st, 1914, sporting the helmet that Dr. Garner provided. After the races, nobody was really impressed and the use of helmets did not become popular by everyday riders. In 1935, things started to change for the motorcycle helmet because of the death of Lawrence of Arabia. Held for his military accomplishment becoming a celebrity in Great Britain, Army Officer T.E. Lawrence was a national hero. His accident highlighted the risk of riding without wearing proper protective gear. Hugh Cairns, the doctor that attended him, studied the injuries sustained by Lawrence and discovered a match with brain lesions found in other motorcycle accidents where no protective helmet was worn. The study of the doctor had such an impact, the helmet became mandatory for all British Army riders. This made them the first official organization to make the motorcycle helmet mandatory during World War II. In 1953, Charles F. Lombard, member of the research unit of the United States Air Force, patented the first motorcycle helmet to have a structure similar to the ones we use today. His helmet had a rigid outer shell and an internal padding. In 1961, Australia was the first country to make use of the motorcycle helmet mandatory. In spite of being one of the key countries in the importance of the use of the helmet, the United Kingdom did not make them obligatory until 1973. Italy did not make it mandatory until 1986, whereas in Spain this did not happen until very late in 1992. Today, according to the World Health Organization, of the 195 countries in the world, only 12 countries do not have mandatory helmet usage for all drivers. In the United States, there are only three states that don't have any requirements when it comes to helmet laws, regardless of the age of the rider. These rare states are Illinois, Iowa, and New Hampshire. The remaining 47 states require helmet usage based on age, with 18 states requiring all ages must wear a helmet. Although it was once speculated that wearing a motorcycle helmet increased neck and spinal injuries in a crash, recent evidence has shown the opposite to be the case. A study that is often cited when advancing the argument that helmets might increase the incidence of neck and spinal injuries dates back to the mid-1980s and used flawed statistical reasoning. In 2008, systematic study showed that helmets reduce the risk of head injury by around 69% and the risk of death by around 42%.
So looking around my shop, I am able to count 18 helmets that I have kicking around in here. I love helmets. I love especially old stuff. Like I've got helmets all the way back to the 1930s. But here in the state of Florida, we are not required to wear a helmet if we are over the age of 21. Now this past week I was approached by a lady, I was at my local brewery having a beer, I was not riding a motorcycle, and she asked me about the Weems Motor Co. channel, she asked about what all we do, and yada yada yada, the conversation led into that she had lost a friend on a motorcycle accident because she was not wearing a helmet. Now, helmets are a very important piece of motorcycle gear. I wear a motorcycle helmet because I'm a YouTuber and I have to have cameras and I have to have microphones so when I'm riding the bike you guys can hear me, you can see what's going on. But there are times when I do not wear a motorcycle helmet and those are very small times. And for example, when I'm practicing uh, riding a motorcycle, let's say I just repaired it and we're just doing a quick test on it and I'm riding inside my neighborhood and I'm only doing 15 miles an hour, I will not grab a helmet. Number one, it's hot here in Florida, so putting on you know, a full face helmet like that is a bit strenuous. So, outside of that, I always wear a helmet and it's time to retire this motorcycle helmet that I've had since we began this channel three years ago. Time to upgrade. This is not an unboxing video. It's not a how to install video. We're just hanging out talking about helmets, why they're cool, why they're not. And before we talk about the new helmet, let's talk about this helmet from the 1930s. So this particular motorcycle helmet is a really early example made by a company called Cromwell. Now Cromwell, dates back to the earliest times of motorcycle helmets. This particular one, I was told, was originally raced in the Isle of Man TT back in 1937. So as the story goes, in 1926, Mr. Thomas Noblet, the manager and director of Helmets Limited from 1924 through 1940, their hottest years ever, leaned over to his son and said, hey, what was that guy's name during the English World War who had all of those soldiers who were so rough and tough that went by the name Ironsides? They were, they were rough soldiers. And, and his son leans over to him and he says, Dad, that would happen to be Mr. Oliver Cromwell. And he's like, that's it. That's what we're going to name our new motorcycle brand the Cromwell helmets because they're going to be so tough and rough that they'll be able to withstand anything that comes their way. So in 1926, the Cromwell Works company was established making these amazing old motorcycle helmets. Now, the material that these are made out of is actually cotton twill that is dipped into shellac, which would be the modern day equivalent of like fiberglass, but let's say it's not as strong. The, the shape, they like to call it a pudding basin, and today we kind of call them pudding bowl helmets. Uh, but it's really rudimentary. It has these nice leather flaps and straps that go around the back. Uh, that would be to help stay warm. And then on the inside is a very rudimentary webbing system made out of canvas uh, that would hold the helmet tight to your head as you wear it. So. Super honored and super privileged to have this helmet as part of my collection. Um, not going anywhere soon. These helmets nowadays, if they have a pedigree and you can find photos of it actually as raced, which I haven't been able to do, can fetch up to over 400 US dollars. So that's pretty impressive. So the helmet that I have been rocking over the last three years is the Biltwell Lane Splitter. Now this was met up with the uh, safety regulations ECER 22.05. Now they've just released a .06 upgrade to this helmet for safety reasons. Uh, we were rocking the Cinna system which we don't ride with a whole lot of people um, 
to have conversations with. We're mostly using it for music as we ride along the roads and stuff like that. So rocking that. Obviously up front we do have our GoPro camera with the, uh, the side mount that I kind of had to put together. But really always love the Biltwell lane splitter. It really kind of fit my head right. Um, they are a little bit noisy from what people say. Uh, but I just like the really look of it and then throwing on that nice yellow amber lens just made it look unique and one thing that I like more than anything is not looking like everybody else. So we got a new one of these helmets from Biltwell. Still in the white, we got the new amber lens and we're going to be hooking up with the new chin mount system for a camera. and. Sad to say, but we're going to be moving away from the Senna system and going with the Cardo. So if you've been around here for more than one day, you know I do not do how-to videos. We do, hey, watch how I do this. Uh, I am not a tech person. I don't like learning new equipment like new comm systems. I am a creature of habits. But... The fine folks over at Cardo were able to hook me up with this system and my good friends over at Biltwell, they hooked me up with this helmet. So I said, what better time as we are getting ready to go back out on the racetrack and race Dolly Mongrel. On top of that, we're getting ready to head to England here in just over a week of this video being recorded. And I'm gonna be hanging out with some great friends over there doing some riding in England. So I said, hey, let's get some stuff together. Let's get a new helmet for our trip over to England and our trip around the track. So with that being said, just wanted to say a special thank you to my friends over at Biltwell. Man, I've uh, known these guys since I was in Iraq in 2006. They sent me a care package with a bunch of magazines and stickers and stuff for all of my uh, battle buddies to enjoy while we're over in the combat zone. So I just want to say a special thank you to Biltwell for that and a special thank you to Cardo for providing these things with all of the attachments and cool stuff that go along with it. So without further ado, out with the old and in with the new. Let's put it together. So we got the Cardo system mounted up on the helmet. Next thing to do is to figure out how we're gonna mount our GoPro. We went ahead and upgraded to the GoPro Hero 12 as it has the capability of connecting to the microphone built onto the Cardo. On my old helmet, I had to hardwire a uh, microphone into it. It was just a mess. But with that, I did discover that there is this awesome company called Chin Mounts that make these mounts for the front of whatever helmet you have many different manufacturers but they specifically make one for the built well lane splitter so works just like any other gopro adhesive mount we just mount it right up on the front it's contoured to fit the helmet directly flip down the little ears on the bottom of our gopro and mount it right on the front nice clean simple design which is what i like keep it easy keep it simple We'll get the camera mounted on there and then we have just a couple little accessories that we are going to finish off this helmet with. So let's get back to work. Alright, so the last thing to do on this brand new Biltwell Lane Splitter helmet is to let everyone know who that person is riding that cool motorcycle. 
and tag it with our Weems Motor Co. name across one side and the Weems Motor Co. logo sticker on the opposite side next to the Cardo. Now, just in case you are wondering, how do I get one of those cool stickers like that? Well, every order that is placed on WeemsMotorCo.com will receive one of those free stickers inside of their package. So, without further ado, let's get this thing tagged and let's wrap up this video. just like that we have a whole new helmet set up now the next time you see this helmet we will be riding on the roads in the united kingdom over in england hanging out with our good friend joe from the works now if you don't check him out on youtube make sure you go ahead go check out his channel he does everything we do just over in england so Super cool, super excited about it, ready to get out on the road and put some time onto this new helmet. Not to mention, go around the racetrack a few times too. But that's what we're gonna do today and we are wrapping it up. We thank you for hanging out. If you are new around here, jump down and hit that subscribe button. If you really like the video, hit that thumbs up, turn those notifications on and let everyone know what's going on right here at Weems Motor Co. Peace.